my favorite drone of all time just got an upgrade, but is it really an upgrade? A lot of people are asking that. The DJI Air 3 is here, and I hope when you're done watching this video, all of your questions about it are answered, including the one I know many of you have, and that's how can this be considered an upgrade when it has a smaller sensor than the Air 2S? So allow me to put this issue to rest right away. So my first few flights with the Air 3 were on family vacation at Flathead Lake, Montana. And when I downloaded this footage to my computer, I'll admit I had low expectations based on what I had read on the spec sheet. But my hesitations disappeared instantly after I watched this clip right here and all of the others after it. I was amazed. It looked pretty much the same as my Mavic 3 Pro footage that I shot the day before. The colors, even in normal color profile, were so perfect. The dynamic range was great. Just everything looked so professional. And I honestly didn't even use my Mavic 3 Pro for the rest of our trip because I was getting such nice videos and photos out of this drone. So I know you wanna see some comparison shots between the Air 2S and the Air 3. So let's see if you can guess which is which before I reveal it. I'm gonna tell you in just a minute why that smaller sensor looks so good. Hi everyone, welcome to 51 Drones. My name is Russ and I really appreciate you choosing to click on my video today to learn all about the brand new DJI Air 3. Now because this video will be a little bit longer, I've organized all of the features and my tests of the Air 3 by category and there are timestamps down in the video description that can take you to whichever topic you are most interested in. So how can the footage from the Air 3 look better than that from the Air 2S? Like what is up with this camera system? So let's talk about that first. The reason this smaller sensor is so good is because the Air 3 has what's called a stacked sensor and not just a backside illuminated sensor like the Air 2S. And this is the same type of sensor that we are seeing in high-end cameras like the Sony A1. No other drone right now has this technology, and it's what sets the Air 3 apart from all other drones on the market today. Now, since I'm no expert in filmmaking by any amount, I reached out to a buddy of mine that can better explain exactly what a stacked sensor is and why it's superior. Hi there, Russ. Thanks for having me on the channel. I appreciate it. And uh, for those of you watching, my name is Peter Lingren. If you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of new tech, but I'm also not a huge expert in sensor technology, but what I do know is this. A basic sensor consists of photodiodes and circuitry, which are basically stacked in together as one single layer. And in a stacked sensor, they have basically separated those two layers and put the photodiode layer on top of the circuitry. This is, you know, going deep into the things that we don't really need to know unless we wanna know why we have certain functions in our cameras. But having a stacked sensor means that we can have a faster readout speed in our cameras because the photodiode layer is on top and we can stab the circuitry layers on the bottom, which gives the camera the capability to process a bunch of stuff faster than if you were to have everything stacked into one single layer. So a couple of things that a stacked sensor will allow you to do is have a faster readout speed, which means less uh, jiggly lines and what do you call it? Like um, jelly effect, I think it's called. Less artifacts, but also higher resolutions, faster readout speed, better autofocus, and there's a bunch of different other things that comes with that as well. So even though it sounds cool, having a stacked sensor means that you're taking digital photography into the next era of digital photography. And I love that. Back to you, Russ. Thanks a lot, Peter. I could just Google that and put it up on the screen, but I think it means more coming from someone who actually makes films for a living. The Air 3 camera system has two cameras. It has a 24 millimeter equivalent with a F 1.7 aperture and an 84 degree field of view. 
And then it has a 70 millimeter medium telelens with a f2.8 aperture and a 35 degree field of view. The wide angle has a zoom capability of 1x to 3x and the medium telelens has a zoom capability of 3x to 9x. This 3x lens is my new favorite lens. Ever since they released it on the Mavic 3 Pro. I think it's the perfect amount of zoom, and I also love the way that it brings the background closer to the foreground for that parallax effect. It really puts a lot of emotion into your videos. Now, the really nice thing about this camera system is that both cameras, other than the aperture, have all of the same specifications. They both shoot 4K 60, 4K 100 slow-mo, 1080p 200 slow-mo. They have the same resolution. They shoot 48 megapixel photos and they have all of the same capabilities like bracketed exposures, burst shooting, and time photo settings. There are no sacrifices when you're switching from the wide angle to the medium telecamera and vice versa. And then also both cameras shoot 2.7K 60 frames per second vertical without rotating the lens. And this can be really useful for people who are into vertical video formats like Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, stories and others like that. Both lenses can also record video in normal color profile, HLG and 10-bit D-Log M. So what does that mean? It means that you can capture incredible dynamic range in your videos where your shadows and your highlights are more detailed and balanced, the colors are more accurate and you can make your final product look so much more professional. So here are just a few comparisons of what you can do when you record in D-Log M with the Air 3. See, I think more people are starting to understand that D-Log M is really not that intimidating to edit with. And even novice enthusiasts can create visually stunning content with just a little bit of editing. So overall, you can see that the camera system is a significant upgrade from the Air 2S. And in many ways, it comes pretty close to matching what you can do with the Mavic 3 Pro. The physical appearance of the Air 3 is not too far off from its predecessor, keeping its sleek, lightweight design with this most prominent change being the addition of the 360 degree obstacle avoidance sensors. It has the bug eye sensors now. Now I'm gonna talk about more about those in just a little bit. The batteries are inserted into the rear of the drone. That's a lot different. And then the USB-C and the micro SD card ports sit directly below the battery. And DJI actually made it easy finally to remove and insert the micro SD card, which I think a lot of people will appreciate it. I know I do because even on like my Mavic 3 Pro, I have to take the battery out in order for me to get the micro SD card out. Well here with the Air 3, you don't have to do that. You can just leave the battery in, just pop open the, um, the port cover and pop that uh, memory card right out of there. So very, very convenient. Now the camera gimbal is not overly large or bulky, but it does protrude out quite a bit, just like all of the DJI's most recent drones, and it, that makes it pretty vulnerable in the event of a crash because that's the first thing that's gonna hit the ground. But there's also a benefit to this design in that it allows for a larger upwards tilt of up to 60 degrees, so that's pretty nice. Now, one negative that I have to mention about this gimbal is the minimum, minimal panning range of it. It only goes five degrees each way. So, you know, if you hold your finger on the screen, like of the RC Pro or on your, uh, excuse me, RC2 or your phone, you hold your finger on the screen and you can control the gimbal, you know, with your finger on the screen. And that allows you to do some really creative moves. But the panning range on the Air 3 is just so small, like it doesn't even make sense to have it. I don't even know why they have it on there. Like they could easily make that 10 degrees. I don't know why they don't, but five degrees is, for me at least, pretty much pointless. So that's my biggest complaint with this gimbal. The Air 3 weighs just 720 grams, which is 125 grams more than the Air 2S. So it's still very compact design, even with the additional weight of that bigger battery. So let's talk about flight characteristics of the Air 3 and we'll start with noise level. The less noticeable your drone is, the better. With all of the stories that we continue to hear about negative interactions between drone pilots and bystanders, it's best to remain as inconspicuous as possible. And every new drone that DJI releases is less noticeable than the previous one. The Air 3 is no exception. Remote ID is almost here, and the Air 3 is yet another DJI drone that will help to mitigate confrontations because of how it sounds.
The Air 3 is spec to be able to fly in 26 mile per hour winds or a scale six wind. And it can actually fly in more than that with no trouble at all, you know, other than significantly reduced flight time, but it still performed fine. All right, so I'm currently running a flight test today with 44 mile per hour wind gusts at 100 feet, 25 mile per hour sustain. I'm flying at about 163 feet. I wanna see how much the flight time is reduced uh, with these types of wind conditions. It's maintaining the speed. I set it right around 15 miles per hour and uh, in all directions, it's staying at 15 miles per hour. So that's pretty good. So let's take a look at the um, flight time here and see what we got. So it looks like we got 29 minutes and 29 seconds. Let's just say 30 minutes. I'll put the percentage of advertised flight time up on the screen here. So still pretty good for these kinds of winds. Now, most of the time you're not gonna fly in these kinds of conditions, but it's nice to know that if you're in a situation where the wind suddenly comes up and all of a sudden you have 40 mile per hour winds, you're gonna be okay. Uh, bring it home right away, but just know that the drone's gonna be able to fly in those very windy conditions. Wind resistance continues to be a highly valued feature of drones today, and the Air 3 performs well above the standard. I was actually really impressed with this scenario right here where I was driving my pickup down the highway, I had the Air 3 in the circle focus tracking mode, having it go around me, and it was able to perform perfectly in a 30 mile per hour wind. So that was really nice. Now more on this focus tracking test later because it achieved something that day that no other DJI drone has. And I'm so glad that it's finally improved. The Air 3 can fly up to 47 miles per hour or 21 meters per second. And I was able to get it to that easily in sport mode. Although that really serves no purpose other than the excitement that comes with flying fast, it is pretty impressive how such a small drone can fly so fast. All right, we're all set up. So what we're gonna do is supposedly this drone, the Air 3 is the fastest drone that DJI has uh, other than the Matrice to get up, all right? Uh, is it 10 meters per second or 12 meters per second? I'll put it up on the screen. But we're gonna race. He's gonna fly the Mavic 3 Pro. I'm gonna fly the Air 3 and we're gonna race up to 393 feet and then down and see who lands first. I wanna see how fast this is. Like, it's amazing to me that this drone is faster than the Inspire when it's going up. So go ahead and start your motors, start your engines. All right, are you ready? Yeah, yep, gonna, left I'll stick. Pop up. What's this say? Oh yeah, we gotta clear that. There we go, left stick only, got it. And as soon as it hits the top, right, left stick down. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. Oh, the Air 3 is ahead already. <laughs> So the Mavic 3 Pro took off a lot faster. All right, we are at, boom, maximum height coming down. Max height. Holy cow. Wow, look at how fast that comes down. No way, no way, that is incredible. And you were holding that stick down the whole time, right? The whole time. Oh my gosh. The Air 3 is way, way faster than the Mavic 3 Pro. So I wish I had an Inspire, I could compare it to that. But yeah, fastest drone going up and down. That leads us to batteries. For the Air 3, the battery design and the capacity are greatly improved. The Air 3 has a 4241 milliamp hour battery that has a 48% increase in battery life over the Air 2S, being able to fly up to an advertised 47 minutes. As always, I'll remind you that all advertised flight times are in very controlled laboratory conditions. Now, as far as real world flight times. All right, so I'm gonna talk about this for quite a bit because battery life is the most impressive improvement I think from the Air 2S to the Air 3. So I tested this a lot of different ways. First, I tested it uh, by trying to stay as close to laboratory conditions as possible. I flew it at 15 miles per hour. I put it in a circle, turned the obstacle avoidance off. I took it down just to 5% and I got, check this out, 42 minutes of flight time. That is 90% of advertised flight time. I normally get 72, 73% of advertised flight time doing that test with all previous DJI drones. Very, very impressive. So then I did it again with obstacle avoidance on. That was without obstacle avoidance. I turned obstacle avoidance on, did this exact same test. I got 38 minutes 
of flight time. Still very, very good, down to 5%. Then I flew it the next day. We had 26 mile per hour sustained winds, 44 mile per hour gusts. Okay, so very, very windy. Set it to cruise control, had the obstacle avoidance off, put it in a circle, and it ran for 30 minutes. Like, I think that's 65% of advertised flight time. Very, very good, especially for those windy conditions. Then I took it out again, and I flew it today. It was today. I flew uh, same type of test. There was no wind today, and I got 40 minutes, down to 5%. All right, so almost 90% of flight time. And then what I did is this afternoon over my lunch break, I took it downtown, flew it around town, and I did a real-world flight test. I left the obstacle avoidance on. I flew... Uh, up and down, I flew fast, I flew slow, I recorded 4K60, 4K100 slow-mo, I did a 2.7K vertical, I did a panorama, I did a hyperlapse, I did all kinds of different things, all right, and I got 35 minutes of flight time. That's still 72%, that's what I normally get, and I only took it to 15%, okay, so normally when I do a flight time test, I take it to five, so the battery life on this drone is, it's stunning. I don't know what other word to use, like, it's really, really good. And I think, uh, I don't know what they did different, but I think it's one of the best things about the Air 3. Now these new batteries also have this new locking system with the double squeeze tabs. And it seems like these springs on the inside are very robust. I don't think these things are ever gonna wear out. Along with this complete battery update, the Air 3 charging bank is also quite different. It does charge three batteries in succession, just like previous charging banks. And it takes 60 minutes to charge one battery if you're using the DJI 100 watt charger and it takes 80 minutes per battery if you use a 65 watt charger. Now one very cool feature is that this charger has what's called power accumulation mode. Okay so I just found this out. This has what's called power accumulation mode and it's really really convenient. So let's just pretend like these batteries are almost charged but let's just pretend like let's say we have a fully charged battery. This one's at let's just say 75 percent and let's say this one's at 50 percent. What you can do is put them in the charging bank. Let's say you need a fully charged battery or two fully charged batteries. You can uh, put them in here, turn the power switch on, okay? And then what it will do, it will take the remaining voltage from the battery that has the least amount of voltage and it'll transfer it, okay? There, it's doing it. So it'll transfer it to the next one. So if you need a full battery and you have two par partially charged batteries, it will take the power from this one and put it into this one. So. Very, very cool. The other thing about this charging bank is that it has these new locking mechanisms. So to get the batteries out, you have to push this little button and then you can slide the batteries out. So that's pretty nice. So you don't ever have to worry about your batteries sliding out of the, uh, the charger. So it's just another safety issue. So yeah, very cool. Power, power accumulation. Safety is yet another factor that DJI put a lot of effort into when designing the Air 3. The most notable is that of the 360 degree obstacle avoidance. And they accomplished it by using just two fisheye sensors on the front and two fisheye sensors on the back, and then the binocular lenses and a 3D infrared sensor on the bottom. The sensing range of these four fisheye sensors is pretty impressive, including up to 18 meters forwards and backwards and a whopping 30 meters laterally. And they all work at speeds up to about 27 miles per hour. This provides tremendous security when flying for less experienced pilots, and it also makes people more comfortable when using any of the focus tracking modes where the drone is following a subject in challenging environments and moving sideways. Now the Air 3 has Active Track 5.0, which allows smooth and steady movements and avoids obstacles during flight while it's following a subject. Now, if you wanna see a full review of how focus tracking works on the Air 3, let me know in the comments and I'll do a full video on it if I get enough interest. I do have one thing that I wanna mention right now, which is for the first time ever with a DJI drone, I was able to travel faster than 20 miles per hour and the drone was able to keep up with me. I was driving my truck at 26 miles per hour and the Air 3 was able to keep locked on and fly at that speed. And that is a significant improvement, especially over the Air 2S and actually over all previous DJI consumer drones with active track. I mean, that 26 miles per hour is very impressive for active track. Another great safety feature of the Air 3 is advanced return to home. So, you know, if your drone ever loses signal, it's gonna come back to you. Or if you ever hit that return to home button, it's gonna come back to you, but there's two different ways it can come back. Number one, if you have it set to preset, I'll go ahead and pull it up here so you guys can see it. 
if it's set to preset, it's gonna go up to that preset altitude that you have. So I have mine set to 131 feet, and then it's gonna come home, and then it's gonna land, okay? That's normal return to home, that's great. But if you have it set to optimal, what it's going to do, I'm just gonna go ahead and engage it right now so you guys can see, you know, it's gonna to turn towards home, then it's gonna just start coming home right away, all right? So it's not gonna go up to that preset altitude. It's gonna make sure everything is okay first, and then it's gonna start coming home, and it's gonna avoid all the obstacles. So it's just a way to get home faster and more efficiently uh, before going up to that auto return to home. It's really just a better way for automatic return to home. So I would just have it set to optimal all of the time. Air 3 does have the auxiliary light on the bottom, which is useful for low light landing conditions, but also can be used for some creative shots at nighttime. The DJI Air 3 comes with an upgraded video transmission system called, you guessed it, 04. It boasts a longer range, up to 20 kilometers or 12 miles, and greater stability in high traffic environments. Now, can you actually fly the drone 12 miles away and still have a video feed? Personally, I will never know because I'll never fly that far away. I'll never attempt it but I'm guessing there will be a number of tests online soon for you to check out. Can it go further than any other drone that I have owned? Yes, yes it can. And now another thing I like to point out is that with the O4 transmission comes a new frequency, 5.1 gigahertz. So now we have three frequency options. With O4 transmission, we now have the RCN2 controller in which you need to use like your mobile device, like a phone or a tablet of some kind. And then we have the new RC2 controller, which looks and feels not much different than the original RC other than these external antenna on the top. Um, these two controllers really aren't much different than their previous versions, the RCN1 or the RC. And the reason for these new controllers is because they have O4 transmission where the older ones don't. Now the video feed on the RC2 is 1080p at 60 frames per second, and the screen is the same brightness as the original RC at 700 nits. And I know that sounds Kind of low, but it's better than any iOS device when it's hotter than 75 or 80 degrees outside and it goes completely dark and you have no idea where you're flying. You do get the RCN2 controller. Make sure you get, make sure you either have an Android phone or you get a tablet, uh, some type of other tablet that's not iOS, all right? Because even my iPad mini and my iPad Pro, they go dark as well if it's any kind of relatively hot outside, so. As far as intelligent flight modes on the Air 3, there's really not much new to see here. We still have the master shots, the quick shots, um, the cruise control, which is really nice. And thank goodness we have waypoints. I think waypoints is the most useful and the most powerful flight mode on a DJI drone. And I'm very happy that they included it on the Air 3. Now, one thing to note for the quick shot modes of Droney, Rocket, Circle, Boomerang, and Helix, you can use both the wide angle and the telecamera with those flight modes. So that's something that I think a lot of people appreciate. A few other features that I wanna mention, but I put them in their own section because they're kind of special, include the quick transfer function, which uses Wi-Fi 5 to transfer your files from the drone directly to your phone. And it can do it at speeds of up to 30 megabytes per second. And then next, panorama. The panorama resolution on this drone is 13,000 by 6,500. That's two and a half times greater than the Air 2S. The panoramas from the Air 3, you guys, are absolutely stunning. If you are into photography, like aerial photography, and you like panoramas, the Air 3 is the drone to get. The Air 3 also has night mode, which allows you to record 4K 30 video in very low light conditions, which I think is pretty impressive for this relatively small sensor. The Air 3 does have internal memory in case you forget your memory card at home, like a lot of us do, but sadly, they still only, for some reason, offer eight gigabytes of onboard storage. Like, I only asked for 256 in my speculation video, like, but we still only got eight gigabytes. I don't get it. They must not watch my videos, but, <laughs> but there is something there. So in case you do forget your card, you're gonna get, you know, a little bit of onboard storage. So I've been flying this thing for almost four weeks now, and I'm discovering new things all of the time. Like, I can't believe it took me this long to realize this, but all of the camera features are compatible with all of the smart features. Like that's a first for DJI. So like frame rate, resolution, 10 bit are all compatible with active track, a pass, waypoints. Like they're all compatible. We've never seen that before on a DJI drone. And I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm always a little bit wary about sharing best settings for your drone because what's best for someone is not best for someone else. But I'm gonna share these with you because I want you to have a starting point 
uh, if you get the Air 3 and you want to have what I have found over the past four weeks to be kind of the best settings for the normal setting. I haven't checked out the sport settings or the cine settings. So these are what I have found to be like the most smooth uh, and the most functional settings for the Air 3. So save this video uh, in your watch list or save it in a playlist or something like that so you can come back to it when you get your Air 3 and you can set these settings. So let's go into the, um, you go into the control settings and then you go to gain and expo tuning. Okay, so we're just talking about normal. We're not gonna touch on sport or cine. So max horizontal, of course, all the way up. Ascent speed, all the way up. Descent, all the way up. Max angular velocity, this one will be easy for you to remember, 51 degrees, um, 51 degrees per second. Yaw smoothness, okay, how smooth is it, uh, how, how smooth does it stop when you yaw? Okay, so I set that to 20. Brake sensitivity, again, another easy one, 51. That just means it's gonna come to a, a moderate stop when you let go of the stick, okay? And then on the expo settings, for the pitch and the roll, I got a 0.3. For the yaw, a 0.25, and then the up and down, I have a 0.4. I have that set a little bit higher. I prefer to have my up and down expo. I want that, a little better response on that. So I do have that up at a um, 0.4. It looks like my drone's about to land. So for max control speed on the gimbal, I have it about 20, anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees per second. Okay, so that's cinematic enough for me on the gimbal wheel. Um, some of you might like it a little bit faster or slower, whatever, but that's, that's my range, 20 to 30 degrees per second. I don't try to narrow it into a perfect number, like there is no perfect number, but that's kind of my range. And then finally, tilt um, smoothness, okay? So you don't want the gimbal to continue to go after you let go of the gimbal wheel. You want it to come to a stop, but not too suddenly. So I have that set to 15, that's like right in the middle for um, the tilt smoothness on the gimbal. So those are what I have found to be the best for the Air 3. Again, I'm gonna say this, I say it so many times, but you guys, you guys need to figure out what's best for you. But this is kind of a place to get started and some numbers to get you started when you get your Air 3. So hopefully that helps you out. So DJI has revamped their Care Refresh, their drone insurance program. So now they have a one-year plan and a two-year plan. The one-year plan comes with two replacements. The two-year plan comes with up to four replacements. And that includes up to two flyaways. Uh, for the two-year plan up to one flyaway for the one-year plan and plus the replacement fees have dropped by 35% So you get more you pay less and it's I I've used it once I used it on my Mavic 3 Pro and I had my drone gone for seven days. It was totally worth it I got a brand new drone. So if you get the Air 3 or any other DJI drone Like from personal experience, I can highly recommend Care Refresh So I'll put a link for it in the video description if you want to check out the pricing I don't have the pricing for it the Air 3 right now, but uh, by the time this video goes live, those prices will be up to date. So check that out if you want some insurance for your brand new drone. As far as pricing for the Air 3, here are the prices at the making of this video. Now keep in mind that pricing may change over the course of time. So always use the link in the video description to learn more and see the most current prices. Comment any questions that you have about the Air 3 and let me know if I was able to help you or educate you in any way today by clicking the thumbs up. Subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos on the Air 3. And if you want to click right here, there's another video that I think you're going to enjoy. At least YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy it. Go ahead and watch that. And then continue to watch YouTube for the next hour or two. That would be awesome. That would really help this video. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.